That is a, a difficult and embarrassing question because one, I am not looking for a job. That's one. You can you can take that to the bank. So nobody should mistake me that I'm completing this work in order to be seen that I want for another job. But if uh, if in his wisdom uh, the the president elect thought that I could even be half worthy to be considered, uh, we would have a conversation with him. We would have a conversation with him because I've now connected with the the children, the poor children. And uh, if uh, we are thinking in the same direction and he gives me the support that I require, which would mean that I do things the way he wants and not any other person, then you, you may be, if it is God's will, I will say yes. But otherwise, uh, I, it is not even in my mind. I believe so strongly the cross that I have had in my chest for 40 years protects me and whatever God wants me to do, uh, the time will come. And if, the, if it doesn't happen, so be it. It's not an issue. There, there are people, by, by the way, I would want to ask you, don't you know that there are so many people falling all over the place for those jobs right now? There are, there, there are so many of them. I shall not be one of them. Are we together? This is the last one. <laughs> The new, uh, the, the competency-based curriculum did not start with C.S. Mahoa. I found the train already moving. So I took it over from there and moved it energetically together with all, all of you to where it is now. The most important thing that uh, the government must remember is that CBC is not a money guzzler. That's one. It is not a money guzzler. You just must make sure that you get value for money. And it is not going to be easy for government officers to get value for money because they have a culture of doing things in a particular manner. Are we together? And the best example are these classrooms, which we have done at 788,000. And I can tell you that uh, people who completed them, some of them are bought cars, some are doing well in business. So if they get an, uh, an officer who is going to make sure that uh, there is zero tolerance to corruption within the ministry. That would be the biggest thing because the money is actually there. It would then mean that uh, they embark on another set of classrooms in the new year because uh, we, we still need another set of classrooms. If it can be done at on or around this price, it will be extremely good because that is the only uh, bottleneck that I'm seeing. They will also have to invest in teachers and you know uh, Dr. Ruto's government has already pronounced himself in public that he's going to employ 56,000 teachers in two years. So that will give us an automatic answer to the teacher requirement for CBC and others. Uh, I think basically everything else is in place. The books, the policies that were made even before I came there, like every child having a book, that is going to continue. On, on a one-to-one -one basis. So I think, uh, in my view, as I go, the elephant in the room is getting value for money. That is, that is a disease, and it's not only in my ministry. It's everywhere. We have 400 and 544 billion shillings as a ministry. People see that money as being too much, and how much can you put in your pocket? But I've been with you in the slums. You know that that money has owners. So as long as uh, the money is put to the right uh, use, the person will, uh, will succeed. But then the bottleneck is that, uh, from my experience, I have noticed that for a minister, and this is personal, my work is not in Jogo House, you know that. The work is outside there in the schools. So I hope that the person who is coming can, even if he doesn't run around like I do, like a headless chicken, he, he tries a little bit to go and check whether what he has been told is correct. And the example is like uh, somewhere in Wazengishu, we were being told that uh, a building was at a roofing level. So when I sent uh, my CS, Dr. Sarah Ruto there, she found that even the slab had not been poured. 
Now, if we have, if we have not been going around, perhaps by now it would have been at 100 percent, but the number of buildings built would be just be about 10 percent. So that is the elephant in the room. And if the person who is coming uh, is, is aware of that, there should be no problem. Everything else is possible. Managing the parents uh, is a continuous process. Uh, it's a, a love-hate relationship. In terms of uh, taking the children out of school, I think uh, we should continue to encourage the uh, parent-teachers associations as the safety valve to protect uh, the poor children. Finally, the Limu scholarship, which in my view is one of President Kenyatta's very sterling achievements, the Limu scholarship now has 27,000 poor children that we took from slums across the country, Nyeri, Kiandutu, in Kiambu, everywhere. And uh, these children have scholarships for four years, but the money comes yearly. That money is being managed by Equity Bank, so that the money goes to the right poor child we got from Kiandutu or elsewhere. We are not in a position yet to manage that money, because then we shall transfer it to our children and relatives. And those 27,000 children will be knocked out of schools like Alliance and what have you. So there is so much that I'm going to put in the form of a white paper for the incoming person. If he likes to move on from there, that's fine. But if he wants to...